Right guys, me and Gav were flat out on this the other night. She's looking well. Radio. Battery died on the camera, so I cracked on with a little bit. So I got the triple clamps in, got the bars on, front wheel, the forks that have all been coated by K Tech. So yeah, it's taking shape slowly. Put the tie bolts in and the axle and section image front wheel nut. Tie bolts uh, in the bar mounts. Yeah, so that's all the front end on. <clears throat> I'll put the 22 offsets in, which is stock. I think it's stock anyway, so someone told me, but the old girl's taking shape. So I'll just start front to rear. Oh, that's what I got as well for it. Apparently, did a special tool now to get the rad cap off. There. Like that. That's it. Yeah, nothing in it empty, so. So you've got to carry all that with you now if you need to top your bike up in a, uh, in a race. And this is how it's going, I'm afraid. Someone will be doing them, cut the top, top off and put a normal red cap on. That'll be the one. One thing I found on the bike in America, oh yeah, it's got a 14 on. So it had a 13 front sprocket on. And I went back to a 14, which for me was way better. Um, I actually run a 12 on my TPI, which a lot of people are shocked for. Not, not for, obviously for extreme, everyone uses 12, but for normal racing, enduro and that, I run a 12 on it. So this bike felt quite aggressive, or the one in America did. Um, so it'll be interesting to get it on my train, my track, so I know you know where I am with a little bit more but um, your 14 seemed to help it which is what I use on the four strokes as well for the exact same reason so that's a good indication it feels more like a four stroke for me because I like my four strokes I, I love my two strokes but four strokes seem to suit me because I'm big and heavy and yeah I just feel more comfortable on them but this when I rode the bike over there it felt way more in between like a three stroke so yeah, we'll see. Got my rental bars on there. 821. So yeah, Samco TP in. That went in good. Yeah, so they're actually way easier to come out than the old ones. That's one thing. So at least they're easy to get out. That's the other ones are a pain in the ass, even with the proper tool. Rads are back on, coolant in it. Um, we'll get to them covers, I think. Just but just go along front end, move back, and then. Put all the bullshit on last, all the plastics and stickers and stuff like that. But I actually can't wait to get on the bike, get it all done, and because um, I really like the one in the one that I rode in America. Yeah, I liked it. Probably lacked a little bit of bottom end, really, for for me. Um, yeah, it probably lacked a little bottom end, but that's something that the TPI I felt the same as well. So I've got my good engine man that I need to speak nicely to and and see if he'll do a similar thing. Um, but that's all down the road, that. We'll get it get it done. Um, I've got a depth pipe. So we've got a depth front pipe for it. It's quite like, again, I like on the TPI. It's very hard, in all honesty, it's very hard to beat a stock pipe on a KTM. Um, I've always said that, but the one pipe I have tried on it that I feels better for me with a bit more bottom is a D is a dip, DP dip whatever you want to call them. Yeah, so I'm waiting for an acro silencer because um, I have a deal with acro and they don't make a header pipe, so um, we'll get the acro on. But they're actually developing one for the new enduro bike as well, which um, is a little bit longer than that little short one down there. So that's all stuff that we can try. Um, but my neck on the old YZ years ago when I was racing the Yamaha, we used to 
I used to get two silencers chopped like two inches off the rear, off one, I'll chop two inches off one and weld it onto that and um, it made an ace difference to them for, for what we were doing. Obviously it was a full full on motocross bike with, yeah, that we were using for World Enduro and uh, it was a great bike. Um, but that just calmed it nice for when it was real slick and everything. And I couldn't really, back then I couldn't really find any silencer that was that was better. So we used to just mod a standard one and it worked great. So probably were one of them. You'd probably weld three of them together and it'd be a bit of normal length. But yeah, it'll uh, it'll be interesting. Just little things like that. They're the things that, that I've always considered made the biggest difference on, on, on my bike. So, um, yeah, we'll soon see, I guess. See how she goes. Right, guys. Um, me and Gav were flat out on this the other night, and then battery went flat on the camera, so we missed sticking it up and all that stuff. But that's boring anyway. Um, <laughs> long old job um but yeah we're waiting for we've got a wheel there but no spaces um it's a 22 mil spindle in these new bikes uh, i think it was like 25 or something in the other so just that she's looking well definitely looking well got the shock on it which is all coated bladder kit from k-tech hinton cover and clutch in it, pro carbon sump guard, we've got the T piece in up there from um, Samco, deck front pipe, waiting for an acro silencer still, don't know where that is, somewhere in America or somewhere between America and, and here, we've got the Raptor foot pegs on, I've got a TM design chain guide to go on it now, Enduro engineering, Little cover there to stop the wires getting ripped off by a stick. Same on the throttle body. Um, proper tire on the front Dunlop. Obviously the forks at K-Tech, if we've had them coated and got the K-Tech kit in up here. Um, so we're really looking forward to trying them out. Talon Raptor triple clamps. Best on the market in my opinion. Trick and some more things coming. Guts tall seat. I've used that seat in uh, Day in the Dirt down south in Florida, so that should be nicely bedded in for me now. Um, we've got lovely Talon wheels with carbon hubs. A bit different colour than we usually get, just something different, and I think it looks pretty good with the tyre on. It's hard to tell when, when you haven't got a tyre on it, but um, then we've got the Motor Master discs, um, as always. What else have we got? Yeah, we haven't done the rear wheel yet, but the rental sprocket, motor master disc. K-Tech have got a linkage coming as well, which is not ready yet, but we'll have that in the next couple of weeks. Titanium bolt kit from Factory Image that you get from off-road only. Um, nice bit of kit, subframe bolts, all the engine mount bolts. We've done all these um, brake bolts. I've put a billet throttle um, housing on it and separate buttons. The new bike's got one start stop button, but I felt like spending some money when I was in America, so I bought these at Nilo. Um, the throttle, so one thing I've noticed is they've got a big cam in the new one, which when I was in America the other week, um, I found it too aggressive on the throttle. So on this, I've gone straight in with the black cam, which is what I run on the TPI. So I think for off-road stuff, it'll be better. Motocross, you get away with that white one, but it's pretty savage, just mid corner. I found it was like lighting up and going over berms almost. So um, yeah, that's a little bit slower action. So I'll put that on. The white cam, that new one doesn't fit in with that, that throttle housing. So I've got the stock one there anyway. That's a stock switch. Um, we've got some brake calipers there, motor master that I might put on, but I've just seen every KTM that I get, the brakes feel different on them. So yeah, just really. So now we need to see if the thing will go. 
I'm hoping it will, but we'll soon see. I've checked everything, been through everything, so yeah, we'll we'll see if she's on a go or not. get a bit of fuel through it and uh, and off she went. One thing that I noticed in Florida on these that you almost start them up, apparently they're, they're quite easy to oil plug up on like, like a normal two stroke with a carb. Um, so literally you fire the things up when we were over there, not even warm them up and just go and ride it because the things are that clean straight away, it's unreal. It's like you don't even have to warm them up, but obviously you do, but we found if you just started warming it like a normal bike, they were oil and plug. So um, that's something I think that will probably improve on it when you get the mapping and everything, more people ride them and get them dialed in. But um, yeah, so there we have it. She's a runner and we need to, yeah, stick some bolts in in the rad scoops and then uh, I'll go and try it down the road and see if it, it all feels alright like it's working. Mm -hmm. 